I grew up on a small farm outside of the small town of Alameda, Saskatchewan, Canada. Bigger Saskatchewan. Mossbank, Saskatchewan. Dundas, Ontario. There's quite a few small towns in the prairies. I grew up right here in Regina. Regina, Saskatchewan in South Albert. I grew up in Regina. Moose Jaw, Southfield. Saskatoon. Burlington, Ontario. Young and Lawrence, North End of Toronto. Quebec and Calgary. In uh, New Brunswick and Nova Scotia. Beijing, China. Everybody has their own, you know, childhood growing up experience, so. I guess about average. Life is pretty much like any small town. Everybody knew everybody, so it was fairly tight knit community. So, but uh, no, life was good. Life was actually really good. Simple. Um, all my family was kind of in one area, and um, things were pretty slow. It's like a small town. I go back there still, and I'll run into you know three, four dozen people on one walk. We had forts everywhere. We had train tracks. We'd go and we'd like you know smush pennies on the train tracks and. Old abandoned mines and quarries, which were awesome for snooping through. Your dad actually ran a movie theater. Yeah, he does. I was just so proud because I don't have to buy a movie ticket every time. And I have a, like as many tickets as I want, I can give to my friends. A very um, quiet kind of place. Uh, no real industry there. You had a 50s mentality and uh, I guess you'd say a hippie mentality intertwined. I've always had mixed feelings about the city. I'm loyal to it, but um, there were some aspects of it that have always drove me nuts, even as a kid. Its size, it's small, and it's just kind of conservative in many ways. There were, I mean, obviously the small town things, like I'm a film student and the nearest theater was an hour and a half away. Um, we only got movies with, you know, to rent, like, a week or two after they were available, you know, the discount bin in Walmart. When you're the only person you know who has more interest in movies than everybody else combined, you're obviously going to feel like the odd man out. There were difficult moments, but then there were great moments because you get, you become more independent. Meeting new people, dealing with emotions, yeah, having a double life. <laughs> First movie memory was basically just the end credits of the film. Empire Strikes Back in 1980. Yes, I am dating myself. Um, I was four years old, and uh, I remember distinctly watching the movie through the... I was in the back seat, bundled up in my pajamas and a Star Wars blanket that I had. And uh, we, I watched the whole movie between the two seats, two front bucket seats of my uh, parents' car. My God, I can't even remember, but she skipped school to see a film in grade seven, and I just was like, wow, that's kind of... That's interesting because I would never even think to do that. Actually, I do remember this. It was Ghostbusters, and it was the first Ghostbusters, and I must have been like three. I was terrified. The Stay Puft Marshmallow Man. Like, I mean, it's all cute now, but when you're three years old, there's a giant fucking marshmallow guy. It's, it's scary. Well, my grandpa, he made a movie named uh, The Black Jack or something, and he, he was a very famous uh, photography in China. Yeah, that was when I was five, I think. The Littlest Mermaid, but not the Disney version, the real version. Um, Mom rented it for us when we were really, really young. And she thought, oh, it'll be wonderful. You know, the kids will enjoy The Littlest Mermaid. It's a good show. And Dad said, um, you realize this is the real story, right? You, and she kept, he kept saying that to her. You realize this is the real story. Oh, yes, 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 yes. It'll be fine. Don't worry. In the real story, well, first of all, they're all naked, so, you know, that was kind of shocking as a child, but after we got over that, um, she dies and turns into sea foam. So we were little children, and we saw this character who we invested in, and we were like, you know, she's a little mermaid. She dies in the end and turns into sea foam. Her sisters sacrificed their long hair and beauty and chance of being married for her to give her a second chance, and she still dies and turns into sea foam. So my first uh, cinematic memory is a traumatic experience of the Little Mermaid. The naked Little Mermaid dying and turning to sea foam. I think mine was the very first Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie, which was amazing. But I think we, we watched it I went with my mom and a bunch of my friends and their parents at uh, Place Real Theatre at the U.S. And it used to be a fantastic theatre. I don't know if you guys ever went there. It was awesome. Anyway, they had this, when you're leaving, they had this huge ramp that comes around the side of the building and we were all pretending that we were Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles we were all doing like karate kicks and pretending to throw ninja stars at each other I really remember that, it was very... <laughs> very formative it was yesterday, it was moment <laughs>
Back to Future 3. Especially the train secrets. I mean, you show that to a six-year-old kid growing up on a farm out in the middle of nowhere, I mean, he pretty much knows what he wants to do for the rest of his life. And that's more or less what made me decide I wanted to do it because I was like, that was kind of cool. I want my, I want my name on that. I had an older brother and he, uh, when we first got our video camera, he sort of just had a natural knack for, for doing things with it. Like we would set up stuff in the fireplace, uh, a, a miniature burning building, have sound effects queued up on tapes, and then we'd have, you know, the sound of the fire, we'd light the little building, we'd have the fire truck get pushed in, and an ambulance get pushed in, and have people screaming. And when I was watching him go from making something to us watching it on the screen, I think at some point something clicked for me that this is what I had to do. Um, I didn't really have like a huge film background when I was growing up. Um, we borrowed video cameras from friends a couple times, but my parents never had one. But we had a lot of cameras. It was always my parents were really into like still photography. I realized that I, I really enjoyed photography, but I, I think I was more drawn to sort of the interplay between audio and visual, if that makes sense. I just really like how you can, you can bring emotions across so easily with the two if you do it well. At that time, I, I sort of wanted to be, become a filmmaker, but I, I wasn't sure. But my parents and my grandparents, they all want me to be a filmmaker for the family business. So that's why I'm here. The process from taking an idea in your head and getting it out there for people to see is pretty much what really made me want to become a filmmaker. Um, just because uh, as a kid you always see all these cartoons and you have all these ideas that go through your own mind about, oh I could do that better or I could, what if he, what if he did this or <clears throat> just the idea of creating and the creative aspect of the art of it really. I made a film in my third year and then made an experimental piece in my fourth year and kind of had an epiphany that if I didn't make movies that I would go insane. Start off pretty kind of slow. Towards like the last about third year on, it started to really start to pick up. There's been other times, you know, where I, it's been exactly what I felt like I wanted to do, and then there's other times where I feel like I've wasted my life. But I'd say on the whole, it's good. Before I was in the program, I'd say, oh, you know, that's a nice shot, but I couldn't really figure out why. Now that I've been here, um, you know, just, I mean, this is only stuff from first year, but simple things about composition um, have to permeate work. The one thing I, I really, really enjoy about the program here in the university is the fact that you, we are required to take film studies courses. And I think it's the film studies, as much as I hate the work in the film studies courses, I love watching these films. The French New Wave class, for example, I will like half, more than half those films I've never would have seen otherwise, and I'm so happy I took that course. You just have a more broader knowledge of what film is and should be and can be. In other film studies or other film programs, they teach you the, the practical. They teach you how to, you know, like to set up a shot. The faculty here teaches you that, but also everything else is centered around cultivating your creativity. Because you can, you can be the most technically minded filmmaker ever. But if you don't have a, an ear for dialogue or an eye for the shot or any sort of creative drive, you might as well just make corporate videos. I think it's a, I think it's a fantastic program myself. I think it, if you take advantage of what it gives you, making you a more rounded artist. To see people, you know, uh, improve their writing school skills over the duration, their critical thinking skills, the, you know, uh, maybe attitudes that they might have had at the second year level that are completely blown wide open by the time they get to fourth level. I was very inexperienced coming into it, um, and still I'm learning. But I mean, <laughs> I intend to be learning until, you know, I retire, I guess. I would have liked it no matter what it was. They could have kicked me in the face and I would have liked it. But I don't know, I think I that, that <laughs> I think that everything I've learned, it's because I came here with basically nothing. I came here with the knowledge of f-stops and shutter speed. It's been nice. I've been really happy to be working with third-year students 
um, in narrative and to be working with ideas around that before they go off into their last year. The faculty is a, a real mixed bag. We've got some kooks, we've got some great people, we've got some people that I don't think should be teaching film. I mean, I'm not going to give names, but you get exposed to a lot of diverse people and they all have their own experiences and their own backgrounds, which are helpful. I think that they need to integrate some of the programs a lot more. The theater needs to be integrated, the actors need to be integrated with the film program. Film school has a way of maybe not teaching you through instruction, but you, you have a goal, you have a project you have to accomplish, and a lot of times you're left to figure that out on your own. And so through trial and error, I've learned a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. But if it wasn't for film school giving me these projects, I would never have been motivated to try half this stuff. I think, all in all, that we do quite well. We are teaching it as a fine art. And I think, as most students go on to the industry, if we can encourage that creativity or that imagination, that uh, it pays off when you see the final programs in the normal commercial television network. I think what the program can do is teach us the skills that we need to stay here, whether that's grant writing, whether that's setting up production companies. I think I think the film program needs to plant those seeds a little bit more. For me, I do want to be a producer in the future, and but here I only took one class, producer class, in this film program, and hopefully there will be <coughs> more specific um, uh, program they offer you. Uh, sometimes I think the students could be more ambitious in terms of their own work and in terms of taking initiative, you know, taking a camera out for the weekend and just playing around with it, um, pushing themselves that way. I think the program and the Faculty of Fine Arts in general is much stronger than it was when I was a student. And I don't think there was as much collaboration and there was a lot more internal kind of battles being fought that even as a student you're aware of faculty members at each other's throats and now it's a much more collegial environment. I think there's a real sense here of building. What can we build together? And that's been exciting for me. I mean, I found it a, a place where I could come and really try new things. Um, the Dean of Fine Arts is really open to everyone experimenting, getting their hands in and seeing, you know, uh, what can we build here? Um, one of the key issues, of course, in the fine arts, and especially in film, is resources, right? Uh, especially for film where um, it's expensive. The uh, Faculty of Fine Arts is undergoing a strategic plan, um, which involves all the departments of fine arts toward our five-year plan, our ten-year plan, and of course this will affect um, you know, our fundraising ability and our goals. Uh, so in that sense, it's an exciting time to be in the Faculty of Fine Arts and at the U of R. Whatever the state of the program is right now and whatever anyone's opinion might be, things are definitely changing. And I think that that's a good, healthy sign.